forget me. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to this evening's edi edition of Reporter's Notebook. Today, I have a very special guest, but hablamos in español por uno minuto, okay? So, Eddie, you are a producer, a morning producer, but you're yes. starting something new. Is that right? Yes. So, I'm relaunching WNCT's online Spanish segment called Minuto Minuto in ENC. And so, what... Kind, what kind of stories are you going to put on the Spanish content? Yes, so definitely the same stories that we run in our newscasts and online, just, um, you know, translate them into Spanish, but as well as try to find stories that our Hispanic audience can resonate to or have some type of connection. And I think that's something that um, we both can recognize as journalists mm -hmm. is that there is going to be a few different stories for different audiences. Mm -hmm. And um, it's important to have these stories available and accessible in a variety of languages. Because for the most part, yeah. what we do, especially as local journalists, is public service, public service yeah. announcements. If there's a food drive, if there's a vaccine drive, if there's um, something dangerous happening like if they're like uh, this morning there was a manhunt in lenore county just trying mm -hmm. to make those stories accessible so people understand what's happening um, i know you grew up in beaufort county mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. did you have access to those stories or did you face any difficulties when it came to understanding local stories and trying to find um hispanic content um I wouldn't say that I struggled, um, I think, because, you know, as a kid growing up, you don't really um, watch the news. Um, but then, you know, going to college and just seeing how other TV stations, they have the English side and the Spanish side um, and seeing that, you know, we had this platform at WNCT.com. Um, and so it's just awesome that, you know, I've been given the opportunity just to roll with it and and like you said, be that public service to to the Hispanic community in our area. Right. And so something that I think is really interesting mm -hmm. that we've definitely dealt with within the past, I would say mm -hmm. it would be something that is new when it comes to mm -hmm. um, journalism school and learning how, how to produce content and write content. Is that making mm -hmm. sure that we're um, that our content is available and accessible? Yes, absolutely. I think when I first came to the U.S., my two older brothers and myself, we were the only Hispanic kids in our school. Um, and they actually had to get an ESL teacher from the county to come to our elementary school. Um, fast forward to like high school and now college, definitely seeing a growth of the Hispanic community in Eastern North Carolina. Um, and so just being able to um, kind of come back to where I grew up and be that journalist of, oh, I can produce, but I can also um, tell these stories in the language that, that my community understands right here in our Eastern North Carolina community. Mm -hmm. And de donde eres? Uh, sí, yo soy de Veracruz, México. And Veracruz is one of my favorite cities because they have wonderful seafood. Wonderful, yes. wonderful seafood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is something that I'm also, mm -hmm. as a journalist, trying to, to be more active in is um, Hispanic mm -hmm. content. Um, and I grew up in Texas. Mm -hmm. And that's and I went to school in San Diego. So oh, wow. and my family, my on my mom's side, my mother's Mexican. Mm -hmm. So I definitely had um, that exposure to Hispanic culture, Hispanic food, talking in Spanish. Mm -hmm. I lived in Spain for a while with a oh, Spanish wow. family. Um, and so I definitely miss speaking Spanish and it's mm -hmm. already, I mean, it's already starting to, to lose it or I'm starting to forget certain words or mm -hmm. how they translate in English. Like I can say it in Spanish, but I can't say it in English. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't know if you have that same kind of like conflict where it's, it's, if you're not practicing it, it even if you grew up in it, you just forget it, you know? No, absolutely. Not just, um, you know, if you don't, you know, our newsroom is, is English based. Yeah. Um, we have a few, you know, Latinx journalists, um, yeah. you and, and Angie, um, yeah. Camila. 
but you know we communicate in english all the time right mm -hmm. and so when we do something like this we kind of have to step up like take a step back or two and make sure that we're communicating um as professionally we can as we can in the spanish language mm -hmm. um and so yeah sometimes you just have to take that step back and make sure you you write and you speak correctly mm -hmm. pues mm -hmm. gracias por acompañarme esta noche y mm -hmm. um thank you for joining me this evening and i'm super excited to see minuto what is it what is the name of the segment yeah it's going to be called minuto minuto and enc and what does that mean in english yeah, it's essentially minute to minute in ENC, Eastern North Carolina. So, you know, like a one minute, minute and a half long Spanish online segment. Mm -hmm. And where can mm -hmm. people find this content? Yes, yeah, it's, um, it's going to be on WNCT.com. We'll keep it rolling. We'll keep it rolling. I like that. I like that. We'll keep it rolling. Okay, well, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for tuning into this evening's edition of Reporter's Notebook. If you have any sort of project story ideas, feel free to email us. Um, my email and my um, my Facebook page is always connected to all the stories that we do. And if you want to see more content or stories that we're not covering that you think that we should be looking into, feel free to reach out to and email us. Um, everyone, thank you so much and have a great evening.